Okay, hi folks, it's Chris. Welcome back to Catching Photons. There is something like a natural ladder of hierarchies that amateur astronomers tend to step up when it comes to astronomy cameras. Most of amateur astronomers start with equipment they already have. And that's not only fine, I highly recommend doing so. Because what's the reasoning behind a thousand bucks camera if you find the hobby unappealing and dull after only a few weeks? Nothing at all. So you should work your way up starting with what you already own, and most photographers might own a DSLR. And using one is great, but at a certain point every DSLR user will ask the question, is it worth spending more money modifying my camera for Astra use? Well, let's find out. Okay, first things first, it's fine to use your DSLR camera just as it is unmodified. You can do great stuff with it. Have fun. But as I said, you can modify your camera. But what do I mean by that? Well, your camera has a certain sensor um, built in and in front of the sensor chip there are different filters. They have different purposes. It's quite a complex field and definitely worth an entire separate video. But long story short, the sensor of most cameras can detect a wider range of light spectrum than our eyes. Especially light in the red and infrared segment gets detected much more compared to our retina. So in daylight photography that might be a problem. So camera manufacturers added additional filters to compensate for that. But in astrophotography we sometimes want those spectra to be detected. One of the most common gases in the universe, hydrogen, emits light in the infrared spectrum when being stimulated with UV radiation. So many emission nebula glow in that deep reddish color and that's so deep red that we can't actually see it. But our cameras can, and it would be so nice to enable them to do so. For doing so, you need to remove this one filter within the optical path that blocks the infrared light. And you can surely do this yourself, if you're very good at microelectronics and optics, and are confident enough not to screw up your camera. So, I'm a physicist, but I leave those delicate operations to professionals. You will find many stores or persons specialized at this topic and they do a great job. They are trained and skilled and <laughs> so I went this way. But it is an extra hundred bucks to spend. So is it worth it? Should you do that? Well, let's try. We will do an experiment. I own a Canon EOS 700D and it's Astro modified. Well, not this one, this one. So we want to figure out what the real impact of this modification is. And being good scientists, we want to keep every other variable constant. Yeah, lucky me, my neighbor has exactly the same camera. Again, the Canon EOS 700D and pristine and stock with all the filters still in place. So I asked her whether I could borrow the camera for an evening and she said, yes, thank you very much. So I was able to use this two nearly identical cameras, my neighbor's one and uh, wait, this one ah. and this one and I kept everything else fixed. So I took images on the same night with the same temperature on the same target, this reddish glow of the Horset Nebula with the same settings, same exposure time of 2 minutes, same ISO of 800, same number of images, 36 each, with the same equipment, both a modest light pollution filter and a coma corrector, both with my 6 inch Newtonian Skywatcher telescope on the EQ6R Pro. So the only real difference between those two cameras is whether they have or have not a astro modification applied. So let's go. Okay, okay. After taking the images from the Horsen Nebula, we can look at two subframes, each taken at 0 degrees Celsius and ISO 800 and each two minutes long. First thing we notice, the image from the modified camera is much redder. I mean, this is to be expected since the modified camera is much more sensitive to red photons. But whatsoever. In this single frame we can already see the difference. With the modified camera you can definitely see more nebulosity around the flame nebula and the first signs of the horse head as well. Definitely something. But I think we do need a bit more than just two minutes of data, don't we? So now I captured 36 light frames each for this comparison. No additional calibration frames, I mean it's just a sensitivity test, no eyes for an A-port or something like that. 
Okay, I run both stacks through Deep Sky Stacker using the same settings and got myself mm, something over one hour of exposure time each. I then used GIMP to systematically stretch the image data a bit. And within every step I copied the applied image manipulation, so something like leveling or curve stretching, and applied it to the second image, and so on and so forth. And there you have it. These two images are treated and stretched totally equally, and you can clearly see the details in the image of the modified camera and not so much in the unmodded image. The flame nebula is clearly visible with its inner structure and the horse head is visible too. And it's also worth mentioning that we still have a lot of red dust in the mod DSLR image, but not so much in the stock camera image, even after applying a basic color correction. This is not an artifact. If we take a look at this object in Wikipedia, we see a lot of reddish dust and gas floating around there. Our modified camera is just better in detecting these color spectra. So we say the DSLR modification would boost the red segment of the image by making it more sensitive to infrared, which is in turn then detected as red by the sensor. So let's have a look at the red channel only. We use this one hour stacked image and splice the color channels apart and only look at the red channel, okay? We again then apply some minor stretches equally to both images and compare them. And here you can clearly see the difference between the modified camera without the infrared filter and the stock camera with all the filters still in place. I mean, look at that. The signal in the modified camera is much stronger and you would need a lot of exposure time to compensate for that using the stock camera. Again, this is the same target, same scope, same exposure time, same image stretching. The only difference is the filter modification. Okay, so would I recommend applying a filter modification on your DSLR? Definitely yes. To be clear, this mod won't boost every image. There are targets like the Player Ds that are totally unaffected by this because they don't emit as much infrared light as other targets. But in general, you can shorten your exposure time a lot, or in other words, you can get a much higher signal to noise ratio out of the same exposure time. The normal stock camera from Canon has roughly a transmission rate for H alpha of mm, around 25%. And if we modify the camera and remove this filter, then we can get up to over 80% transmission rate for the remaining optical components. There is another modification, at least for Canon cameras, the so-called full spectrum mod, where you remove all other filters and stuff as well, and then you need some sort of IR cut filter for astro images, but you can come close to 100% transmission. But this mod is more difficult and removes the sensor's ability to self-clean from dust itself. And going from 25 to 80 percent, this is the big step and this saves you the exposure time. Going from 80 to 95 is another step, but not as big. So all in all, let's sum it up. Yes, the modification is another 100 bucks. Yes, it won't benefit all targets. And yes, the white balance is screwed afterwards. But the enhancement of H-alpha is so significant, the white balance can be fixed with an additional clip-in filter or with a manual white balance, and thus your camera can still be used for daytime photography, but <laughs> why ever you should do something like that. And if you want to step into narrowband imaging, a modified DSLR can easily be used with an H-alpha filter in front of the sensor due to the enhanced sensitivity for H-alpha. So all in all, for everyone starting with astrophotography, just use your stock DSLR for a while and get a first idea what all this is about. If, however, after half a year or a year, you are still on board, a Astro modification is the next logical step up the ladder. Enhancing the SNR of your image is a lot for a little effort, and it's definitely worth it. You enable yourself to use the HA narrowband afterwards as a next step, and maybe then get utterly fixed to astrophotography that you can't reject the idea of buying a thousand bucks dedicated Astro camera next. Yeah, it's this rabbit hole thing going on here but for me, one step after another. So, here's the comparison image again, and if you liked this episode, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. This really helps this channel. Links to all the comparison images are down in the descriptions, together with some helpful links. And so, as always, I say, clear skies, everyone. Until next time, here on Catching Photons.